The iPhone 15 Pro Max has been my full-time device over the last month, and it's been pretty darn good. I've used it for all of my regular day-to-day -day stuff, for my work stuff, for taking photos and videos, and basically everything you do with an iPhone. So in this video, I wanna cover how I feel about this device, the battery, the performance, the design, etc. So let's get started. The iPhone 15 Pro Max starts off with a slightly higher base price than it did last year at $1199 versus $1099. However, with that, you do get 256 gigabytes of storage standard, so they basically just dropped to the bottom tier. And the 256 gigabyte version is the one that I have here. I usually find that that's the perfect amount for me, so I can store all the applications and games and whatever I want on here. When I go on vacation, I can download movies and TV shows and still have enough internal storage space for photos and videos as needed until they get backed up to iCloud. However, you can upgrade to 512 gigabytes or even a terabyte if you need that kind of storage. And we all know that the iPhone 15 Pro got a design change this year, changing out the stainless steel for titanium, and I do think it looks great. I mean, I like the matte finish better than the glossy finish on the previous iPhones, and there's no denying that this just feels better in the hand with the rounded edges. Plus the iPhone is lighter, it is noticeably lighter than the previous versions of the same devices, and that really is nice. But if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you and myself, I've determined that I like to use a case just because I think it feels better overall in my hand than the slippery, thin materials that the iPhones are made of. And that's just a realization that I've come to over the last couple of months, uh, not just with the iPhone 15 Pro, but anytime I try and go caseless with an iPhone, it just doesn't feel as good to me. It doesn't feel as secure in my hand. So I think I just have to admit to myself that I'm a case person. However, when I do pop it out of the case, I do like the new colors. Of course, this is the natural titanium and this is the white titanium. And the bands are so incredibly similar that it's really hard to tell them apart. I mean, it's difficult. And I think they both look really nice and classy on the back for different reasons. And yeah, I do like the look of the titanium. Overall, I love the look of the new iPhones and they feel really good in the hand, but I can't hold onto it all the time. Sometimes I have to put it down. And why not put it down on a really nice stand like this Ugreen phone stand? This is a dual arm aluminum stand that is incredibly sturdy and adjustable. With the soft padding on the bottom and the back where your iPhone sits, your iPhone will sit snug and protected from scratches. With dual hinges, you are able to adjust the Ugreen phone stand to any angle you want to. You can go up high joining a video call or down low for playing a new favorite game or somewhere in between for watching a video on the iPhone 15's amazing display. This stand is compatible with every iPhone or Android phone. Plus, it folds nearly flat, which makes it great for tossing in a bag and taking it on the go. If you need to charge up when using the Ugreen phone stand, there is a notch at the bottom. And using the adorable Ugreen Nexode RG 30 watt charger, you can charge your iPhone 15 Pro Max from zero to 60% in just 30 minutes. And when charging is complete, the friendly face will change to let you know you can unplug. If you're looking for something similar for your iPad, the Ugreen tablet stand pairs really well with the phone stand, and you can even complete the whole set by adding the Ugreen vertical laptop stand for your laptop. So if you wanna dress up your desk with the Ugreen phone stand or other stands from Ugreen, then take a look at the links and codes in the description below, and my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. And what is usually antithetical to Apple is the addition of a new button on the iPhone 15 Pros this year. Yep, that action button. Now, when I first set up the iPhone 15, I set the action button up to the camera because I figured that's probably what I was going to use most. Now, of course, you do have other options. You can select from focus modes or flashlight or even a shortcut. And of course, I've seen all of those videos with everybody setting up different things to do with the action buttons with shortcuts and bringing up menus to bring up seven or 10 different options or nested menus of all kinds of crap. And then I was like, but why? If I'm going to go through a menu of items, why do I need to put that on to the button? So I had it on camera for a while and then I changed it to flashlight for a while. And honestly, I'm finding that I don't use it or realize it's there as much as I thought I would notice it. It's probably just muscle or brain memory having issues remembering that there is a new button and it will take more time to get used to, but I haven't used it as much as I thought it would. So for now, I'm just going to leave it on camera and keep trying. We also now have USB-C on the iPhone, which Yes, that's pretty great. 
And on the iPhone 15 Pro line, you do get USB 3.2. So you do get faster 10 gigabit per second speeds compared to the slower regular USB 2 speeds on the regular 15 and 15 plus. So I tested out and made a whole video on all of the things that you can do with USB-C and the iPhone and there's a lot you can do. You can hook up microphones and cameras and gaming devices and video out. You can connect a whole dock or a hub to connect all kinds of things, SD card readers, USB ports, whatever. Yes, you can absolutely hook this to a monitor or a TV and make a game console out of it, but will you? I think it is great to have the ability to connect things to the iPhone, especially as the iPhone evolves over time. But this is not something like Samsung DeX where you connect it to a monitor and you basically get a full Linux based computer. In a pinch, you can connect things to the iPhone to get some things done if you really need to, but I don't think that the port is super useful for right now. However, it's going to be useful for future versions of iOS, probably. When it comes to the display, this is essentially the same display as last year. It's a 6.7 inch display at 460 pixels per inch, which is stupid sharp. There's a two million to one contrast ratio with 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content, which just makes movies pop. I mean, there's no other way to say it. They look amazing on this display. In regular usage, it gets up to a thousand nits and in the direct sunlight, it can get up to 2000 nits. So you can actually see your phone in the sun. That is until your phone heats up and then starts to dim down. This phone gets bright enough for any lighting condition that I'm going to find myself in. So no issues there. But the iPhone does also have 120 Hertz pro motion. And yes, the internet is going nuts over pro motion versus not having it on the new iPhones and whether or not people should be up in arms or people should not care. And honestly, I don't care if you don't care. I like pro motion. I like having that faster refresh rate. I like having smoother animations. I completely and definitely notice it when I switch to a device that does not have it. That doesn't mean I can't get used to another device and use it just fine. But when I have the option of having a pro device with pro motion, I prefer that to a non-pro, non-pro motion device. And just like last year, we get the dynamic island on these displays and I like it. It's helpful sometimes. I'm not as excited about it as I was when the iPhone 14 Pro came out initially because I just haven't actually used it that much over the last year. I have used it for different things like flight tracking or for ride sharing or Uber Eats or whatever, different things. And it is nice, it's kind of cute and it kind of bounces around. But overall, I mean, whatever, it's there. Would I rather we don't have it? Yeah, sure, I would rather not have a notch or a dynamic island and just have a full display that goes all the way up and somehow everything that I want, like face ID and a camera is behind the display that I don't see, but I don't have that today, so oh well. But the display like last year is just really, really good. It's hard to beat. And speaking of display, check out this new wallpaper. It's called Violet Sky. My 11 year old daughter created this. She's an amazing artist in just getting into creating digital products. So if you're interested in this, she's got a wallpaper pack. So it comes with one for your iPhone, one for your iPad, and one for your desktop computer. And you can find that in the link in the description below. When it comes to the speakers on the new iPhone 15 Pro Max, they're really good. They're louder than the regular 15 Pro. They sound very similar to the iPhone 14 Pro. They sound good. I use them mostly or primarily for listening to audiobooks or podcasts or even just live TV in the background of my iPhone. I don't really use the speakers on the iPhone to listen to music that often. Usually when I'm listening to music, I'm popping in headphones or AirPods or whatever. But for the mostly spoken audio that I use these speakers for, they're clear. There's a good differentiation between the lows and the highs and everything sounds really good. When it comes to cameras on the back, we do get a 12 megapixel F2.2 ultra wide sensor right here. As it was with the previous couple of iPhones, these pictures are fun and great. It's nice to get this super ultra wide perspective. It's probably the lens I use the least, except when it comes to macro lens, whether I intentionally want it or not. I do like to use the macro lens for different things like pulling a splitter out of my finger or just trying to get really close to something for, I don't know, maybe a cool shot for my desktop. The main sensor is a 48 megapixel sensor at f1.78 that gives you a 24 megapixel image. And that's a huge jump up from the 12 megapixel image size that we've been getting for the last many years on iPhones. If you like iPhone photos, you're going to like these. They're crisp, they're bright, they have a lot of detail. And for the regular person like me, who just pulls their phone out of their pocket and takes a picture, it does a really fantastic job without thinking about it. 
And then there's the golden child, the 5X Tetra Prism lens on the back of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is the only iPhone to get that 5X zoom lens. The regular Pro only gets the 3X that it basically had from last year. And I have to say, I was surprised at how much I really do like having that extra reach. It's been fun seeing how far the iPhone can reach, starting with the ultra wide lens and then going to the 1X lens and then cropping into the 28 and then the 35 millimeter and then going to the 5X, like it's pretty cool. And honestly, the best part about the 5X lens for me in the last month has been being able to get actual good photos of my daughter at her volleyball games. There's a pretty decent difference between the 3X camera and the 5X camera. And now I can actually get usable photos of my daughter in the middle of a game, whether she's going up to hit the ball or she's serving or whatever. It's nice having that camera. And if there's one thing that I upgrade for every year, it's the camera because I want to have the best camera I can in my pocket at all times. And this gives me a much better photo at distance than I got previously. And the big video feature of the year is ProRes Log, which of course gives you a very flat picture profile, which you can then use to grade inside of a video editor. And in the last month, I really haven't used it beyond just testing and playing around with. And I don't think that I'm going to be using this very much at all for my workflow for making these videos here. One, because the video size is just astronomical. It's about 30 times larger than the video sizes for these cameras that I'm using right now. And second, I would probably use it more for B-roll, so doing 60 frames per second, but then I have to get a drive or a thumb drive and connect it and go through that whole rigmarole when I could just grab one of these cameras, record it, and then get it in the computer just as easy or even easier. But in my testing, it does look nice, and I can see how actual real professionals out in the field might be able to utilize it in their workflows. The iPhone 15 also gets that next generation portrait mode where it will automatically grab depth information when you take a photo of a person or dog or cat and then you can go back and change the focus point and aperture later in the software. And this is awesome. And you can choose whatever you want after the fact to be in focus. Now, both iPhones offer the ability to capture pro performance of the iPhone 15 Pro Max has been non-issue. I mean, it is incredibly fast, just like last year's iPhone was incredibly fast and the previous one. In fact, I made a whole video comparing the iPhone 12 Pro to the iPhone 15 Pro, if you want to check that out. And there's not a big difference in regular activities. But here are the results of the Geekbench 6 benchmark. For single core performance, I got a score of 2,938 versus 2,518 on the iPhone 14 Pro. For multi-core performance, I got a score of 7,261 versus 6,325 on the 14 Pro. And if we move over to GPU, you can see a score of 27,499 compared to 22,482 on the iPhone 14 Pro. So, Overall performance gains in benchmarks are somewhere around 10 to 15 or 10 to 20%, depending on what you're doing. But in real world, everyday usage of this phone, swiping through apps, opening up applications, surfing the web, there's basically no difference. It doesn't matter what you do on these iPhones the last couple of years, there's almost nothing that can slow them down. My favorite game to play is Call of Duty Mobile on the iPhone, and it plays just as well at the highest settings using the iPhone 12 Pro as it does the 15 Pro Max. Although the A17 Pro chip inside the 15 Pro and Pro Max does have hardware ray tracing capabilities, so we're just kind of awaiting those AAA console whatever games to come to the iPhone. And when they do, then maybe we'll see a big difference in gaming performance, but overall performance for regular day-to-day -day stuff and regular applications, it's fine. It's good, it's great. When it comes to wireless performance on the iPhone 15 Pro, the 5G speeds have been pretty good for me. Of course, there's so many variables that go into the speeds that you're going to get when you're connected with 5G. And right now, as you can see, I'm getting a pretty poor speed of around 13 megabits per second download. And let's see what the upload speed's going to be. So about two. So those are pretty crappy numbers. But if I go downtown somewhere, then I'm going to get faster speeds in the many hundreds of megabits per second range. And for the most part, it's going to be fast enough for most things. This iPhone also has Wi-Fi 6E built in, which is probably faster than your router that you have at home. But I do happen to have a Wi-Fi 6E router right over here. So we'll just go ahead and test it out. I'm also on a 10 gigabit network. So let's see what kind of speeds we get. I've seen this all over the place from a couple hundred megabits all the way up to 800 megabits. I get really close to a thousand megabits per second when using my MacBook Pro with 6E but this guy just varies a lot because, you know, wireless. Then there's the second generation ultra wideband chip inside these devices, which can give you further distance and better accuracy. And if you have another iPhone 15 device, you can track each other down using those if you need it. 
Now, one of the biggest questions is about battery and Apple says up to 29 hours of video playback, just like with the iPhone 14 Pro. And so far I've had zero issues with the battery. It has been lasting me all day, no problem. As you can see, I have over eight hours of screen on time today somehow, which is weird. Yeah, that's really weird. I'm gonna have to look into that. Home Assistant for some reason is taking up a bunch of time in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping. Screen on and idle, weird. But if we look over the last 10 days, you can see my average screen on time is five hours and 16 minutes, really low a couple weekends ago. That's pretty good for me. And you can see that I use Safari and DirecTV and YouTube probably the most on this device. And when I go to bed each night, I'm going to bed with somewhere between 25 and 45% battery left basically every night without any issue. So the battery on this device has been really good for me. I haven't had any problems or concerns. And if we look at battery health, we're at 100%. And no, I'm not somebody who's going to turn on that 80% limit. I'm not going to limit my iPhone to 80% battery just to keep it from going down below 80%. That makes no sense to me. So not going to use that. Other features inside the 15 Pro Max I have not used, thankfully, is crash detection, SOS, and roadside assistance. All that satellite help you can get from an iPhone if you really need it. Hopefully you don't need it, but it's there if you do. Now I do wanna talk about a couple of issues real quick. First of all, the heating issue. I never had any issues with the iPhone Pro heating up like others did online. Apple did release an update to help fix that issue. And maybe I didn't have the issue because I never had Instagram on this phone until just a couple of days ago after the patch was released. So for me, I have not had any heat issues at all. I know some people are concerned about the durability of the iPhone because if you press it, you might be able to break the back, but you know what, whatever. You're probably gonna put it in a case anyway that's going to help add durability and rigidity to the iPhone. If not, you know, be careful or get Apple Care. Now I have had a number of issues with freezing over the last month on this device, and I'm not sure if it's limited to just this device, if it's iOS 17 or what. However, sometimes if I pull this iPhone out of my pocket and I hit the power button as I do it, I'll end up with just a black screen. I won't be able to do anything. It won't light up. It won't react for at least a minute to 90 seconds. It is pretty crazy. But I've also had the issue with the display on when I'm actively using it whether I'm swiping in an app or I'm trying to swipe to go home or move between, it doesn't matter. It, random times, the iPhone has completely locked up, again, for about 60 to 90 seconds at a time, and then eventually it comes back to life like nothing ever happened. I'll be switching over to another iPhone in the next day or two, so I'm really curious to see if it's an iOS 17 issue or what, and I'll probably end up wiping this device and setting it up as new just to see if the issue continues as well. Another weird little bug that I've seen is that sometimes inside the settings menu, the back button or back button text is white. Like I can't even see it. You can barely see it. If I go back and then go up to say general and then look, it's still white there. It's really strange. Now, if I go ahead and force quit the app, it will end up coming back. So we'll go back in and you can see that the text is now blue again, weird. And the last, I guess, issue I have with the iPhone 15 Pro, I kind of mentioned at the beginning, and that is this iPhone feels way better in the hand than previous iPhones in the last couple of years. Absolutely. I still just don't feel comfortable using an iPhone without a case. Whether I'm picking up from a table and trying not to drop it or just holding it in my hands or pulling it out of my pocket or whatever, it just feels like it's a little slippery, like I might drop it. And luckily I haven't actually dropped it to create damage or anything like that, but I think I just prefer to have a case on it. I don't know what Apple could do to make this more hand-friendly, to make it to where I wouldn't want to use a case. But for me, for now, I think that having a case just feels better than going naked. Sorry. So overall, the iPhone 15 Pro Max over the last month has been a pretty great iPhone, sans a couple of issues like freezing, which I guess is a pretty big issue. But hopefully I'll get that resolved. If you're looking to upgrade from a 14 Pro or a 13 Pro, this probably is not going to feel like a big upgrade. Like I said, I did a big comparison against the 12 Pro and had basically no difference in regular day-to-day -day usage. But if you're coming from a non-Pro iPhone or a much older iPhone back to say the 10s, then this is going to be a massive upgrade and I think you're really going to like it. But let me know in the comments below what iPhone you're using today and whether or not you're going to upgrade to the iPhone 15 or 15 Pro. And if you do wanna see that video comparing the iPhone 12 Pro to the 15 Pro, check it out right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.